What's up YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to my shop. Thank you for tuning in to the first video on my channel. I hope you'll stick around and maybe even learn something by watching how I work. Today, I will be showing you how I built this china cabinet. We will be using this cabinet to store and display china and glassware in our home, but it could also be used for everyday use items. I started the build by breaking down a 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch MDF veneered plywood. The MDF veneer is ideal for painted furniture, leaving an extremely smooth, finished surface. After cutting the parts to final size on the table saw, stop dados are cut to hold the shelves. A small notch is cut out of the front of each shelf, so they fit flush in the stop dados. With the dado stack still on the saw, I set up a sacrificial rip fence and cut a rabbit in the back of each side to accept a one quarter inch back panel. Plate grooves are cut in the middle four shelves using a half inch round nose bit on the router table. After making the first cut on each shelf, the fence was moved back and the same process repeated to cut the second groove. Stick on unfinished maple edge banding is applied to the front edge of all pieces. This stick on product and tool kit from FastCap made the process go very quickly and left a nice paint ready surface. Finally, all parts are sanded before the carcass is assembled. The case is assembled with glue and brad nails using corner clamps to hold each shelf square during the glue up. The center of the shelf was marked and 16 gauge brad nails fired to hold it together. With the carcass assembled, I can now measure and cut the back panel from a sheet of 1 quarter inch MDF. To fix this, I cut the panel shorter so it landed in the middle of the top shelf. A second piece was then cut to fit the remaining space. And we're back in business. To make the tapered feet, 4 quarter soft maple stock is milled to size. Tapers are laid out, marking the material to be removed, then cut using a taper jig and stop blocks on the table saw. Pieces are glued together using tight bond and a couple dabs of CA glue acting as a clamp. More tight bond and CA glue was used to attach the feet to the cabinet, but this time I also drove a few brad nails. With that, the case construction is complete and I can begin building the doors. The two doors consist of a rail and style frame with a single vertical and four horizontal dividers within each door to create a true divided light door. Starting with 4 quarter soft maple stock, I lay out the parts and break them down to rough size. Each piece is then milled to final dimension. The rails and styles will be joined together with a bridle joint, which is essentially a mortise and tenon with an open-ended mortise. I start by changing my blade to one with a flat top grind, so the bottom of the mortise will be cut square. The mortise is then cut using a tenoning jig on the table saw. I then put in a dado stack and set up a stop block on the crosscut sled to cut the cheeks of the tenon. The tenon is offset, so I reference one of the cut mortises to set the blade height for an exact fit. While the dado stack is still in the saw, I cut a rabbit in the back of the rails and styles to accept the glass. A quick test fit, and everything is coming together very nicely. Using the same dado setup, rabbits are cut into each side of 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch stock to create the dividers. The dividers will fit together with a half lap joint cut with the dado stack and crosscut sled. 
to match the spacing of the dividers with the position of each shell. I make the first cut on a vertical divider with a stop block clamped to the sled fence. After that, a new block is glued to the base of the sled that keys into the half lap. The first joint fits onto the block and the work pieces move down to make each cut. The last step is to cut a rabbit on the face of each end of the dividers, allowing them to fit into the frame of the door. After a dry fit, all parts are sanded before glue up. Glue is applied to the tenons and the frame assembled and checked for square. Twenty three gauge pin nails are used to hold everything in place. The divider grid is glued, held square, and pin nailed before installing the assembled grid into the door frame. With construction now complete, I can begin preparing for finishing. I first fill all nail holes and joints with Bondo glazing putty. Then sand smooth and vacuum the dust off before priming. Since it is winter in Iowa, it's too cold to paint outdoors, so I set up a paint booth in the garage using a shade tent and painter's plastic. I'm applying Sherman Williams Emerald latex paint for the primer coat using a Graco X5 Magnum airless sprayer and fine finish 312 tip. This paint is not designated as a primer, but I had some left from our house construction that I wanted to use up. After allowing a few days for the primer to dry, it is sanded smooth. And a thin bead of caulk applied to the shelf joints. To mount the doors, I will be using SOS 103 invisible hinges. They are installed into a mortise that is cut in two stages using a plunge router and hinge template. The location of the hinges is marked on both the case and the doors. The center of the template is lined up with the mark and clamped in place on the workpiece. The shallow mortise is cut first. Stops are placed in the jig, the plunge depth adjusted, and the deep mortise is cut. The same process is repeated on the case side. I will show details of using this jig and the modification I made to accommodate my Bosch guide bushings in a later video. After a test fit, I can move on to final finishing. First, I spray the interior which is an off-white color. The top coat I am using is Sherman Williams Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel. In my experience, this paint leaves a very smooth and durable finish when sprayed. Two coats were applied to the interior of the cabinet, standing between coats. Once the last coat is dry, I install the back panel using 16 gauge brad nails. I marked the location of each shelf to make sure I didn't blow out any nails at this stage in the build. The exterior and doors then get a final sanding. The inside of the cabinet is masked off and the black top coat applied using the same emerald urethane paint.
Each door gets 10 panes of glass. Instead of measuring and marking each piece individually, I made a quick jig to cut down 24 by 30 sheets into the approximately 14 by 6 inch pieces that I needed. The glass is installed with a couple dabs of silicone to prevent it from rattling. Then nailing retainer strips with half inch 23 gauge pin nails. Finally, hardware is installed and the build is complete. Thank you for watching the first video on my new Custom Cuts by Chris channel. I have a lot more projects planned, including building out my shop and a variety of furniture pieces for our home. If you enjoyed this video, please stick around and maybe even consider sharing it with a friend.